Hi, welcome to the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Harrison Goodman. Uh, I am the content executive at Higher Things, and this is a brand new podcast where we're going to be tackling a whole bunch of stuff that goes on in your life and uh, how to address it. Uh, joining me today is the executive director of Higher Things, Erica Jacoby. Uh, Erica is a, uh, well, she's, she's my boss, so it's her job to uh, coax productivity out of um, immature people with the attention spans of goldfish and in a previous life she was a teacher so basically same skill same set thing. same skill same set, skill set. Yeah. yeah thanks for joining us today erica um, thanks for being you <laughs> so um since we are we are your wheelhouse um we're gonna talk today about learning um there's uh, mm -hmm. uh, this fancy word that you uh taught me the other day called logical fallacies and i like fancy words because they make me sound smarter than i actually am uh so let's start diving into uh logical fallacies first what is that thing yeah, so uh, you and I are going to be talking about basically your brain and how to use the God-given tool uh, that God gave you correctly, right? So when we have tools, we learn how to use them correctly. And your brain, just to probably to oversimplify it, is something that God gave you, your, your reason, your rationality, um, in order to kind of help you get through life. And so what you and I are going to be doing is um, from a kind of that learning standpoint, looking at logical fallacies and how to sort of avoid them. Um, one, so that you can get the most out of your education, but also um, so that you don't kind of um, fall into bad habits or ways of thinking. And because ultimately, sometimes those kinds of things can threaten your faith and threaten the things you believe. So that's why we're going to kind of be picking through them, hopefully in kind of a fun way. So um, essentially a logical fallacy, um, that can happen anywhere. I wanna be clear about that, not just in the classroom. Um, you will see it everywhere. You're gonna see it um, on social media a lot. I bet that's where you probably see a lot of most uh, logical fallacy. You could see it in the classroom. You might see it in your curriculum and you're gonna to wanna to know that as you get through high school and college. You can't assume always that everything you're reading is rational and true. Um, and so we wanna kind of, use that God-given brain to work through that. Um, it can happen in arguments in your friend, with your friends, just conversations with your friends. Um, and it can even be really challenging to avoid using them yourself. So maybe you're using them and you don't even realize it. So it's, a, it's right. kind of a good thing to, to point out. And to so aware. it's not necessarily that you're not smart enough to think right. It's just that uh, it, it's, they're the easiest sort of paths, the paths of mm -hmm. least resistance. And so yeah. the reason we kind of fall into them uh, a lot of the time isn't because we're not capable of thinking, right? We mm -hmm. have those God-given brains, but mm -hmm. it's just sort of, it's easier to use these. And well, old Adam's lazy. Uh, oh, totally. I'm very lazy. Uh, which, what, what kind of logical fallacy are we gonna be tackling today? Yeah, so we're gonna actually be talk, tackling, excuse me, tackling ad hominem logical fallacy. Uh, which That's a just, fancy word. It is a fancy word. It's a Latin word. Um, and that one's probably the easiest one. I'm pretty sure it's the one that siblings use from like as soon as they can talk. So yeah, we're going to be talking about a little bit about ad hominem. And what that is, is when you are in an argument, and let's talk about the word argument um, first, probably. Sometimes there are arguments that are really negative and bad, but in academia, arguments can be a good thing, right? So you're trying to reason something out. So when I use the ar word argument, don't necessarily think of that as a negative connotation. Um, it can become so, but um, so yeah, argumentum ad hominem is actually, well, the easiest way to talk about it is when you're arguing or um, reasoning something out, it's when you attack the other person in a personal way. So it, it would be otherwise known as just being a jerk, right? Just <laughs> kind of like, so think of ad hominem as a, just being a jerk. Um, so uh, for example, when, um, as I mentioned, siblings, it's probably the first thing they learn how to do. Um, if you want to win an argument with a sibling, you just call them a big dummy, right? Like that's an ad hominem argument, argument at the, at the easiest level. It's like, you're wrong just because you're dumb. So that's a personal attack, right? And that's not a so way to win the argument, right? Attacking the person instead of the argument. And it's Correct. easier because the argument might be solid, but the person's a sinner. And so there's going to be at least something wrong with them. And in my Whoa. case, a lot wrong with me. Right. So yeah. Right. Let's just aim at the lowest hanging fruit. Yeah, so like, for example, Goodman and I, this is our second take, because the first time, 
he messed up but because he doesn't know how to use the internet cor- correctly guys so because he's, he's just old. not smart there's my ad hominem argument for why we're doing the second take right <laughs> That's magical um, uh-huh. and not wrong. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, that would, you know, that would be wrong. If we were talking about like why the first take didn't work and I blamed him because he's not smart or he's, um, or maybe the camera shut off because he just doesn't look good today. He's not looking attractive. That's a personal argument. It's not a way to win the argument, but you will see this one a lot on social media and it really sh- tends to shut people down, right? Um like think of bullying. Everybody has seen examples of bullying. Um, And how do you shut someone up really quickly? You go after like what they're really sensitive about, right? Doesn't even matter what the argument about is about. Think about how quickly you can kind of make somebody shut down by pointing out something that they are are really kind of sensitive about, right? Um, Kind of shuts it down. So. Right. Um, and, and I mean, you'll see it a lot in politics too, where it stops being about sort of the right and the wrong of a situation, but it's just mm-hmm. about who's the biggest, well, who's the biggest idiot. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, well, it, it, I don't know that we've had a political discussion uh, in the last, I don't know, 10 years without attacking somebody personally, which is why I don't like talking about politics anymore because it's, it's, it's not part about of campaign people. strategy. It is. Yeah. It, ad hominem is now part of campaign strategy. They will literally right, so pick apart the person. They will they won't look it, at their policies. They'll look at what kind of human being they are and they're terrible and bad and stupid and what have you, you name it. doesn't mean, I'm not wrong? saying that those things aren't true. Um, well, because it's, it's, it's not a logical way to win an argument. If what we're talking about is foreign policy or something, whether or not, um, Biden or, or Trump, um, are faithful husbands or, um, you know, or the smartest person in the, in the world, um, doesn't really, it doesn't really vet foreign policy, for example, right? Right. So it doesn't actually change right and wrong. And, and Mm -hmm. worse, I mean, we set aside the eighth commandment where God actually warns us against, well, thou shalt not use ad hominem arguments, thou, thou shalt not bear false testimony against your neighbor, which means we should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well with him, and explain everything in the kindest way. That means that, not that the, the truth doesn't matter, the truth very much matters, but it, it means that if you're willing to speak well of somebody along the way, that when you finally come to the truth, uh, it, it's because you actually earned it. You, you know that you're at the right place, not just that you're against the wrong person. And, and right. that's an important distinction. Um, so we've found examples of ad hominems because I'm old and can't work the internet, uh, because all of us have seen politics run astray and awful places in the last 10 years. Um, how do we, how do we combat them? What do we do when we use them, when we find them, when we can't help but think them? Well, one of the things I love about logical fallacies is if you study them, you can immediately point that out if you're in the course of a conversation. Um, you can even do a little teaching and explain, um, you know, if you're, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example. If, if you and I are arguing about why our first take didn't, didn't go very well, and I call you a dummy who doesn't know how to work the internet, um, you can say, well, we're on the internet right now. And let's talk about the fact that, um, you're saying things didn't work because of me. And, and, and you can essentially say that's an ad hominem argument, Erica, which essentially means you're attacking my personhood. Um, you're talking, you're attacking who I am. And that really has nothing to do with whether or not zoom is working yeah. properly. Um, that's not going to help us solve zoom. Are we, is this, is this conversation about solving our zoom issue or is it about, you know, tearing me down? Because um, I'm not, that's, not a, that's not a productive conversation or a productive argument. So really the best thing to do is to recognize <coughs> the logical fallacy, uh, maybe even explain it to the person, um, and then go from there. Are we going to continue to ha- like hash this out in a productive way? Because if not, I'm going to walk away because ad hominem is frankly just you don't, have to, you don't have to put up with it. Same thing on social media, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, if you, and you can see it everywhere, which is why a lot of people choose to disengage from it is to kind of just shut it down and say, this is not a productive way of doing it. Right. So you, that was a a really poignant way of addressing it. So we, we sort of uh, point out the fact that when there's an ad hominem, all of a sudden now there's two discussions that kind of got clumped into one and we need to Mm -hmm. peel that back. And we need to talk about you as a person and the thing that you believe as separate things, because well, 
everybody believes in something bigger than themselves, or at least I hope they do, at least Christians. That, that's the definition of a Christian. You believe in something bigger than yourself. It's going to make you a hypocrite. It's not a good thing. It's, it's bad to be a hypocrite, but it just means that you believe in something that you're not capable of. And so whether or not I'm a perfect example of what I believe or whether or not I'm just a, 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 well, a perfect human being who believes something, we need to sort of separate me from the belief so that we can talk about the belief. And if we're going to merge the two together, it's always going to get messy. And so we can say, like, look, we can talk about my personal flaws later. There's a lot of them, but let's, let's talk about this to. right now. I'd be happy yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> when performance reviews come, that will be a pleasant conversation. Um, <laughs> but remember, you give me feedback too. So to be fair. Fair. Uh, <laughs> But, but in reality, it also means that if there's somebody who's not willing to sort of part from ad hominem attacks, there's only so far the discussion is going to go because they're just using the opportunity to talk about you instead of the truth. And well, if they don't care about the truth, why do you care about the conversation? Yeah. And, and I have to say, too, if you're having a and remember, I, I was careful to define the term argument. If you're having an argument with somebody um, most of the time we enter into arguments, maybe unless it's with a sibling or something, right? Sometimes we just want to bug them. That's kind of mm -hmm. different. But if you're entering into an argument, particularly with someone for the purpose of coming to an agreement or, or fleshing out an idea, you're assuming that both people are working towards the same purpose. Um, and frequently, um, you want to point out that ad hominem argument because you're going to very quickly get to, is this person entering into this um, conversation with the idea that we want to have a productive conversation, or is this about something else? So pointing that out really helps you very quickly to identify, are we on the same page here? Are we, are we working together? Are we assuming that we're working towards compromise or toward a common understanding? And if you find it's a, just all about, really, I just want to be mean to you, walk away. You can figure that out really pretty quickly. And that's, there's two kinds of arguments. So there, there's the kind of argument where it's, it's about coming to the right conclusion. And that's why we're arguing. We're setting our opposing ideas together, not to win, but to see which one is right. Um, yeah. And then there's the one you have with your sister, which is just about winning. And those aren't actually as- And just about good. getting under their skin and really just kind of being mean. Yeah, those aren't. <laughs> We've all those, done Those it. are, We've yeah, Lord it. have mercy on us sinners. Yes. Um, all right, ad hominem, that makes sense. Is there anything else you want yeah. to say about it? We're, well, what, well, Reminder, what did I say was the easy way to remember it? Oh, I already forgot. At, it's the, I'm just being a jerk. I'm just Logical being a fallacy. Jerk. It's gotcha. the, I'm just being a jerk defense fallacy. So if I you like can't it. remember ad hominem, it's just that I'm just going to be a jerk. Yeah. I like there you it. go. See, you forgot. So this right. is why we have to, this is why we have to do more than one table. Don't. Don't do an ad hominem. We're, we're closing down the podcast now. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, boss. We will uh, talk to you next time. This has My been pleasure. the Drive to School podcast. Uh, tune in, like, subscribe, share. This is Higher Things uh, for you. All right, we're out.